Welcome back friends! Today I'm not going to show you a food recipe, but instead I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of certain food we consume daily and perhaps lead you to the discovery of other foods. So without further ado, let's now delve into the health benefits and or side effects of carob and cocoa. Let's start with carob first. What is carob? The carob tree is a plant species with a majestic appearance, which reaches a height of 10 meters and lives up to 500 years. It is native to Syria and fits well in rocky and limestone soils with warm climates. for example, in the Mediterranean region. This plant comes from the pea family. This resemblance becomes apparent when you look at the pea-like pods it produces, which are called carob pods. So what are carob pods used for? The brown pods from carob trees, when ripe, can be harvested, dried and ground into powder. The powder has a miraculously sweet and mild flavor and is very similar to the powder made from cocoa plants, the foundation for chocolate. What are the health benefits of carob? Carob is rich in proteins, fibers and complex sugars. It is a source of antioxidants. In particular, many of its health benefits come from its high vitamin and mineral content, including calcium, zinc, potassium, phosphorus, vitamin K and vitamin E. It's a wonderful ingredient for promoting intestinal health by combating bacterial overgrowth in the GI tract. Carob has also been linked to a healthier weight, improved blood sugar control and reduced cholesterol. Additionally, it can help with weight loss since consumption helps to decrease the amount of ghrelin, the anger hormone produced in the body and therefore overall appetite. This food is also a great digestive regulator with its fiber content, helping to enhance optimum peristalsis, which is the movement of digestive contents through the digestive tract. Not to mention the bioactive compounds such as dietary fiber, polyphenols, flavonoids, cyclitols, containing carob pods, have been associated with a variety of health benefits, including glycemic control, cholesterol reduction, anti-cancer effects, and many more. Carob is rich in phytochemicals compounds as well, which have been shown in scientific literature not only to have anti-tumor, anti-proliferative properties, but it has also been shown to promote the death of leukemic cancer cells. Studies show that carob as a non-dairy source of calcium may decrease the risk of osteoporosis, while other studies have shown that carob may reduce regurgitation in infants compared to the control formula. Researchers additionally found that the use of carob is also beneficial in the treatment of diarrhea. What are the side effects of eating carob? Well, there doesn't appear to be any side effects when taking carob. Typically, people who are allergic to chocolate, nuts and tree nuts actually do not have reaction to carob. And now it's the turn of cocoa. What is cocoa? As you may know already, cocoa originates from South America. It comes in the form of an evergreen tree, about 5 to 10 meters high. 
The flowers of various colors are transformed into cabocide or cocoa fruits. The seeds are extracted from the cabocide, which properly processed, that is, fermentation, drying, roasting, decortication, grinding, separation, solubilization, are transformed into cocoa. The cultivation of cocoa requires very high cost and begins to produce only from the fifth year. The major producers are Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador and Venezuela. The major producers in Asia are Indonesia and Sri Lanka, whereas in Africa are Ghana, Nigeria, the Ivory Coast and Madagascar. What is the history of chocolate? It seems that the Mayan people were the discoverers of cocoa as well as the first to cultivate it. According to an Aztec legend, the plant was donated by a god to alleviate the suffering of humanity. In the Aztec civilization, cocoa was considered a luxury item. In fact, it was a prerogative of the upper classes and sometimes it was also used as a bargaining chip. In Europe, the plant arrived thanks to Christopher Columbus, who, during the third voyage, received the seeds as a gift on the island of Guanaya. But it was only until the 1528 to get to know cocoa in the form of a drink, thanks to Hernán Cortés. Beginning in the 600s, cocoa was perfected in Florence, Venice and Turin, to the point of achieving the well-known worldwide success. What are the advantages of eating chocolate. Well, chocolate is good for the heart and circulation. Recent studies have shown that chocolate, if dark, helps restore the flexibility of blood vessels and prevents white blood cells from sticking to the walls of the arteries, avoiding the dangerous obstruction. Additionally, chocolate may prevent skin damage caused by sun rays, improving blood flow and increasing the density of hydration. Studies have also shown that our vision can improve due to chocolate consumption. Therefore, if you have some problem with your vision, you could at least give it a try and consume a certain amount of chocolate on a regular basis. As for cognitive functions, experts suggest that taking a cup of hot chocolate a day can help improve memory, especially for elderly individuals. Thanks to endorphins, the substance that our brain produces in the moment of profound happiness, and that chocolate also contains, we immediately feel better, more positive and full of energy. But what are the disadvantages of eating chocolate? Although chocolate can have various health benefits, unfortunately it also has downsides. For instance, its excessive consumption leads to acne problem, obesity, hypertension, coronary heart disease and diabetes. All these because in chocolate there are significant quantities of sugar and cocoa butter, rich in not only in fat but also in calories. Only 30 grams of this product contain about 160 calories. Since it contains plenty of sugar, chocolate can also be quite bad for your teeth. In addition, cocoa, the main ingredient of chocolate, contains important quantities of caffeine. This substance, if taken in large doses, can cause palpitations, anxiety, insomnia, and in severe cases, a high risk of miscarriage in pregnant women. Last but not least, there are also some problems related to the production of chocolate. Many cocoa companies still exploit local farmers who often have to work for quite long hours and only get a quite poor wage. Therefore, if you buy chocolate, please make sure that it has been produced with the help of fair labor in order to protect those cocoa farmers. So what's the difference between carob and chocolate? And why carob over chocolate? Well, one difference is that unlike chocolate, carob does not contain oxalates. A diet high in oxalates can indeed increase your chance of developing kidney stones. Therefore, carob may be a good alternative for chocolate, especially in those people with a history of kidney stones who need to eat a low or modified oxalate diet. Another difference is that carob has a more natural sweetness than chocolate, meaning you usually need less of it in similar recipes. Although it presents more natural sweetness, carob is however lower in sugar and fat compared with chocolate and contains a huge quantity of protein, therefore making it a great choice for those with diabetes. 
carob has also more fiber than cocoa, something many people are deficient in. Last but not least, carob is caffeine free and can be a good chocolate alternative for children or adults who are sensitive to caffeine. Both carob and chocolate are neutral for all blood types. Nonetheless, carob is particularly beneficial for those of type 0. Having said that, you can now evaluate yourself whether carob or chocolate are the best option for the health of your body and soul. Don't forget to let me know in the comments whether you tried and like carob and which one you prefer the most. If you enjoyed watching this video, it will mean a word to me if you can click that little subscribe button that can help this content raise to the top. This can be a way to promote healthy eating and cooking based on naturopathic medicine, psychological and neuroscientific research. Thank you again for watching and see you soon my friends.